In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a pocket-sized red smoke flare. It can be easily carried during outdoor activities in remote locations like backpacking, mountaineering, or kayaking. It is waterproof and serves as a signaling device to increase daytime visibility during search and rescue operations. Typical handheld smoke flares are about 9 inches long, cumbersome, and extremely expensive. These factors discourage outdoor enthusiasts from bringing these potential life-saving devices in their packs. I will be demonstrating three different red smoke formulas you can choose from based upon desired appearance and available materials. A few non-household things you'll need are red smoke dye, such as solvent dye red 111, I got mine from Fireworks Cookbook, potassium chlorate, magnesium carbonate, this is just some gym chalk from Amazon, at least one waterproof match container, metal or plastic. You will also need to make polstering igniters. The ingredients and instructions are on my website at adventionincarnate.com. More on that later. So subscribe once, then subscribe again when you are magically unsubscribed for more barely legal but still legal instructional videos. Oh, and like the video if you liked the video. Okay, goodbye, I love you. Be advised that the solvent dyes used for smoke devices are often difficult to obtain in small quantities at reasonable prices. The dye in this video is from Fireworks Cookbook and it was the only color available at the time. I'm going to show you three formulas. The first is from Tech Ingredients. Check out his channel because he is the man. His formula is 36% smoke dye, 27% potassium chlorate, 18% sucrose, 16% magnesium carbonate, 3% sodium bicarbonate. This formula runs hot for plastic cases and decomposes the dye a little bit. You can see how it is orange as it comes through the exit orifice. It does look cool though, and orange is the official rescue signal color. The aerial view shows its reflectivity in sunlight because somehow there was no wind on the beach that day. One thing to note is not to compress this powdered mix mechanically because it will not burn smoothly. The ash matrix suffocates the reaction. Here's the plastic cap melting off. This mixture burns too hot to hold in your hand with either a plastic or a metal case. Here's a clip I took 8 minutes after I thought the device was done. All of these colored mixes should be compressed only by hand. In other words, just push it down as far as you can with your thumbs. And obviously wear gloves. This is the second formula, and I'm just going to lead with, yes, it looks pink. But hear me out. This is the current formula for the military's red M18. The formula, as published, is... Solvent red 1, 34.2%. Disperse red 11, 6.8%. Potassium chlorate, 17.7%. Magnesium carbonate, 9.6%. TPA, which is terephilic acid, 14%. Sugar, 17.7%. And stearic acid, which is optional, 0.5%. The stearic acid is not critical, and the smoke formulas that you see in this video do not contain it. But, if you're going to be making a lot of smoke devices, it's a good ingredient to have. I personally prefer to use it, as it increases burn quality. By that, I mean the smoothness of the burn and the cloud thickness produced. The reason for the TPA is to add a white base to thicken the smoke and improve the color. This would be great if we were using pure solvent dyes, however the dye in this video is not pure. It's just called, quote-unquote, red smoke dye. I contacted Fireworks Cookbook to get info on the composition, and the owner wasn't sure. Since then, however, it appears that they started carrying pure dyes. This is why the smoke looks pink, but boy does it burn well. Modifying this recipe is what brings us to our third smoke formula. I took the sum of the solvent red one the dispersed red 11, and the TPA, that ended up being 55%. I made that the ratio of the red smoke dye, in quotes. Then I carried the ratios of the other ingredients in formula 2. This results in the best formula, in my opinion. Potassium chlorate, 17.7%. Magnesium carbonate, 9.6%. Red smoke dye, 55%. Sugar, 17.7% and stearic acid, which is optional, 0.5%. This resulted in a cool burning, smooth deploying, and richly colored smoke cloud as seen here. Now that you've chosen the formula, I'll show you how to make the device. I'm going off script now, so good luck to you. I have shot this video four times now. 
and this last shoot, which was perfect, I thought the microphone was not working. So I'm going to just voice this over. Before we get into dumping this red stuff into this tube, I'm going to put up a photo. Here is the ignition system for this device. Obviously, there's a pull ring up here and a cord. Then there's a cylindrical tube. You see on either side of this tube, there's a needle sticking through it. That's one needle that's going through the sidewall of the tube. Then it's going through the center of two of these American Visco fuses. And then it's going out that sidewall again. And the sides of that needle, the ends of that needle, are intentionally left out projecting maybe a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch. And that is to bite into the plaster or the epoxy, whatever it is that we use to set the exit orifice, the top of this device. So I just want you to have an idea of what it is that we're building here. Meanwhile, back at the murder scene, I have filled this container up with our smoke composition and then compressed it by hand. Now I'm drilling a central hole through that composition. The diameter of that drill bit is 3 eighths of an inch or so. Here is our pull string igniter from the pull string igniter kit that I sell on inventionincarnate.com. If you're absolutely adamant about not purchasing the kit, I spill all my secrets. I have the recipes and the instructions for this device, but Anyway, it's the sole funding of my channel. It's 98% of my funding. Now I'm cutting this tube to about a half an inch to five eighths from the pull string end. This is American Visco Fuse from Pyro Creations. I like it because there it's a s stealthier burn. It does not emit a spark shower like normal Candon Fuse does. Also, it has a nitrocellulose lacquer coating on it, so it's waterproof. Now I'm taking a small piece of aluminum foil, and wrapping it around a dowel, or in this case a matchstick, and then sliding it over the end of this striker string, and that's to protect it from getting a bunch of junk all over it when it's in that smoke mixture. It also fa facilitates its sliding out. It slides through the ignition composition, and that's how it ignites. All right, now I am pushing a small pin through the sidewall of this cardboard tube, and then I'm going to be putting it through two pieces of this American Visco. I'm doing it about, I would say, 3 16 of an inch from the end of the fuse. It depends on the distance from the end of that cardboard tube to the ignition cup you know if, when it bottoms out so you can just line it out line it up and see where you need to puncture it this one I'm uh, putting it in there real tight because I have a lot of trouble pushing this pin back through that other side wall uh, I guess I edit it so that it doesn't seem like I'm having that much trouble now I am putting a little dab of CA glue around that pin and then I'm gonna activate it and just to, you know harden it faster um that is to reinforce that that pin in there now the whole cardboard tube is actually coated with thin ca glue you could use an epoxy or you could don't need to use anything i like to uh just add the redundancy of waterproofing it somewhat now i'm cutting the pins about three sixteenths of an inch to a quarter of an inch from the side of that tube and that is just to have a projection that will bite into the epoxy or the plaster casting that we're putting on top of the uh, we're making an exit orifice with it it's just kind of like a plate it's just to to feed the smoke through and then to baffle the the composition so it doesn't flare up now I'm adding a, it's about a 20 mesh window screen. It's just like a screen door screen. Uh, it is metal, obviously. Um, this is not a necessary step for you guys, but I was just testing it out. It actually, now that I'm voicing this over after the fact, it worked beautifully. So you can do that if you want. I'd say it's optional, though. It would also contribute to the durability, the overall durability of the device in terms of, like, dropping it, you know, having the sidewall of the smoke composition collapsing you know on impact uh, this mesh screen would hold it in place and it also filters out the ash occlusions that could potentially 
occlude that central hole. Now you'll see I'm a little high here. Um, what I'm going to do is add some more of this smoke mix around just so that when I pour the plaster or the epoxy, it does not come down and, you know, surround the fuse below it. We want to keep that all contained in the smoke composition. If that makes any sense, I don't think it does. But So I'm adding that composition here, then packing it down. Now I'm mixing some of this. It's a two-part West System epoxy. You do not need to use epoxy. I've done this six times, and so I am just adding a new variable for me to test um, to see how this performs, if there's any difference. The water putty is great, this Durham's water putty, or just plaster of Paris. Obviously, you want to uh, mix it pretty thick. You do not want it to be a liquid. You want it to be like a really thick paste when you, when you put it in because the moisture from the... Oh, look, you can see... Oh, no, that's dust from the microbeads. So these are uh, this is spherical glass beads. That it's a it's an epoxy filler that I'm using. It apparently uh, increases or it helps the heat resistance of the epoxy. I'm using it as a thickening agent. And there, that's what we're doing. We're just basically putting in. So what happens is is that tube becomes the exit orifice. And here we are testing. So I'm going to switch back to stereo. Actually a lot of output for a small device, you know? 